right. Well, we are live. So whenever you want to start, um, I'm ready for you. All right. All right cool. Thank you. Um, welcome, everyone, again. Yeah, very excited um, about this second um, part of our series. Um, Corey had very great insights. Um, and so we are excited for Corey to give us some more uh, mic drops and, and, and knowledge um, on uh, interview pointers. So, Corey? Thank you, Elizabeth. All right, good morning, everybody. Um, thanks for having me back here again a second time. Um, today, we'll be, we will be dealing with our interviewing and the follow-up piece. Um, so just to kind of recap here, last time we talked about uh, the resumes and the cover letters. Uh, we have a little phrase that we like to use here in our office, and it's that resumes don't get you a job, okay? Resumes get you an interview, and then the interview is where you really get to go in there, shine, and that's what's going to get you the job. So this is all, a, this is a puzzle. We can't have the true picture of what we're looking at here if we don't all have all those pieces where they need to be um, and that they're all strong and supporting. So for example, if I don't spend my time wisely uh, you doing my resume, um, I'm never going to get into that interview. If I don't go out there and do my best and prepare for that interview, then it didn't matter how well I did on that resume, that is not going to get me the job. So every piece of this needs to have 110% of your energy put into it. Otherwise, uh, you are going to uh, fall short of what your goals are for yourself, okay? So we don't wanna, I know it gets a little distressing sometimes. You don't hear back from the resumes to get the interview. You go out and you do the interviews and you may not hear back from the employer. Um, but just so we're all clear, when an employer tells you no about a job, they don't always mean no, you're not going to get this job. What they mean is no, not right now, okay? And you have to just keep going out there and trying and trying and trying until you do what it is that you need to uh, to get where it is that you would like to go, okay? Um, so to move on into what we have here today with the, the um, interviewing and the follow-ups, Part of this is gonna be a little bit easier for you guys because we've already done a lot of the research, right? If we get a call from an employer and they tell us that, look, we found, we saw your information, we were very impressed with what you provided to us, we would love to talk to you a little bit more so that we can uh, find out more about you and figure out if you're gonna be a good fit for our agency and if we're gonna be a good fit for you. Um, I think that sometimes people will get a little bit um, maybe downtrodden in the, the way that they handle things walking into an interview like they are being judged. I want to put a little bit more power in your court, please, okay? Um, because this is not just a one-way street. Um, don't walk into an interview thinking that you're going in and you're being judged. They're putting a little piece of dry bread on a plate and uh, throwing a really, dark, uh, a really bright light at you and you're just being uh, judged and scrutinized. Um, if you go in with that kind of a mentality, you are going to feel a great amount of pressure during this, this process. So what I want you to do is realize that, yes, you are going in and they are talking to you to figure out if you're going to be a good fit for them, but you should always be listening to them as well and realizing that I have power and I have play in the game too. I need to make sure that this company is going to be right for me as well. So it's not just you answering those questions from them and them judging you. You're walking in there with the idea that we are coming in on the same level playing field and I am judging you if I will like you just as much as you are judging me and whether you're going to like me okay I will I do find out that quite frequently that helps people walk in there with a little bit more confidence not just that they're being judged but they are also going in there and figuring out if that's going to be a good fit for them so try to get yourself into that mentality please okay so they've called you they told you they want to speak with you we've got some work to do right? Um, it's not as much as what we did before because we had to do all that research about the employer when we did the cover letter and the resume. I want you to pull all that stuff back out. So organiza organization is key here, folks, because you, you know that you need to get that information back out again in review. And it could have been two weeks or a month since you applied for that job. And some of those things might have gone a little bit hazy uh, in your mind. So I want you to get out that information and we're going to be re-reviewing it. OK, we're going to make sure that we go back to that employer's website and find out if there's anything that we need to make notes on. Is there anything that we would have missed before? OK, um, the other piece, 
uh, get that job description again. Hopefully you still have it from before. I love to print everything off or save it into a file and put it into a folder in my computer. But that job description needs to come back out again because we're going to need that, right? Um, that research we used to create that resume, it could have been going to the employer's website. Um, it could have been um, going to the Better Business Bureau. It could have been going on to LinkedIn and asking people about that company. Uh, there's a lot of research that we did and we're gonna get that out as well. Um, so uh, again, get into your contacts, see who you might know from that company. LinkedIn is great because you can go put a company's name right in there and see anybody that works for that company that's created a LinkedIn account, okay? And I'm gonna have you see if there are any connections that you have that would be able to help you. Have I worked with someone previously who now works with this employer? Or maybe I can see that they worked with them before and they've now moved on to another company. Well, that's, those are great things to be, uh, great people to be looking at to figure out whether or not um, you would like to proceed with this process, okay? Um, we're gonna get it all organized and reviewed so everything is now fresh again in our mind, right? A uh, couple of things that we wanna know about that company because they do ask strange questions during an interview and you need to be prepared for them, okay? Uh, one of the things, the company and mission statement. That is a huge thing. Um, at another job that I worked at some time ago, I remember that we had had a meeting and there was an icebreaker. And during that icebreaker, one of the questions was, what is the mission statement of our company? Now, this was a place that we worked at. And many of the people that were around the table with me couldn't remember what our mission statement is, okay? That is imperative for them to know that you did your research like you were supposed to by little things like that uh, mission statement. So you're gonna, uh, get that memorized in your head and know that when you walk into the interview. Uh, those are great little keywords to be bringing up. Respect, dignity, compassion. Uh, there's a lot of things that they will use in that mission statement that are great little words to be dropping during an interview. Okay. We're going to know what those job duties and the skills are that are necessary for us to be successful in that job, right? Um, if you gone over it once, you probably need to go over it a second time. And in fact, you should be able to close your eyes and say reasonably, what would I be doing generally in this kind of a position if I were to be able to uh, get into it, okay? Because uh, they, they'll ask you, tell us what you know about this job, okay? And if you're like, well, I don't, um, uh, you're looking for people to work for you, uh, that's not the way to answer that question. So again, uh, go through it several times. You should be able to close your eyes and say to yourself, this is how I see a person in that job being successful by the things that I would be doing, okay? Um, here's another one. Know what you have to offer and do not sell yourself short, folks, okay? It is really important for you to know what you have to offer and more important for you to know what you have to offer that also is something that an employer needs you to do in that job. Okay, when those things coincide that may not necessarily have anything to do with each other, we need to pay strict attention to those things. Okay, um, so if they've called you, they're going to set up a time and a place for you to do that interview. You better know what day, time, and location you are supposed to be at. Okay, and an employer will not like if you say, well, I went to the wrong location. I thought it was over here, but really it's over there. And they're going to say, guess what? <laughs> Never mind. Okay, so you definitely wanna make sure that you have all that stuff planned out well ahead of time, okay? Um, here's another really good one. Who will I be interviewing with? When they call you on the telephone to set up a time for you, it's a really good thing for you to say, well, who would I be meeting with? It, will there be just one person or will there be more people in attendance as well? Okay, um, so get those names, write those down. There is a far different message that gets passed on to an employer when you walk into a business and say, I'm here for an interview. And they say, well, we have five or six different people interviewing uh, those candidates today. Who are you supposed to be meeting? And you're like, well, I don't know. They told me to be here at 1245, okay? Well, you're not prepared, okay? So what I want you to do is know that name so that when you walk in, you can say, hi, my name is Corey. I'm here for an interview with Elizabeth, and it's set up at 1215, okay? That is a far different message that it's going to be uh, received by the employer. You know exactly what's going on, and you've taken control of the situation. So make sure that you do get that information down, uh, write it as soon as you can get it, and then make sure you go in and you ask for people by name, 
okay? Um, also, get your things ready, all right? You wanna make sure that you have plenty of material available. You don't always know what you're walking into, and I will tell you, sometimes employers treat their interview process like the Colonel's secret recipe. Okay, they're going to say, well, we don't tell uh, anybody how that, it, that uh, interview works. Part of what a job I had in the past was reaching out to employers and trying to make sure that we knew as much about their hiring process as possible so that when people would come into our business, we would be able to lead them in the right, right direction. Okay, and sometimes I would ask a, a, an employer about their interview process and they say, well, actually, that's a piece that we're going to leave out right now. We don't want people coming in too prepared in, in the way of we want to see how they may handle themselves in a situation of stress. Now, we're looking for the best candidate, but we know that in this job, you're going to be encountering things that you may not be ready or expecting every day. And so we want to see how you handle those types of situations. So you'll prepare the best that you can. Okay, so you're going to get all your materials together and I'll talk here in just a little bit about what you really should need to have on hand when you walk into that interview. Okay, another thing um, is oh, you can ask who you're going to be interviewing with, but what style of interview will this be? Will it just be me and that person that you told me? Will there be other managers or other supervisors in attendance as well? Will other candidates who would be interviewing for this position also be uh, there in the room with me? And I'll talk about those different styles that we would see for the different interviews that are available out there. Okay, um, so now that they've contacted you and they've asked you about a time, one of the things that I understand is that we all have things going on. Uh, we are all busy people, right? Um, but I would say do not make yourself too hard to catch. So when they offer you a time and a place, I would take the first one if at all possible. Okay, you have to remember that this is, you know, they may not give you a second opportunity, right? Now, generally, they're going to be a little bit more flexible than that. But if it is something that I can reschedule with little to no effort at all for something else, I want to make sure that I'm going to be able to go to that interview. So if you can, take the first time that they offer to you. Okay, if you can't, you better be ready to take the second one. Okay, you make yourself too hard to catch and they're going to move on. All right. Um, so the next thing that we want to talk about is their company website. Uh, again, I think it's just really, really important to know exactly what is on that website. Okay. Um, again, I mentioned the mission statement. How about the values that a company has? I mentioned just a little bit of them, and I'll tell you why this is important. If we take a look at two different um, hospitals, so let's take a look at Unity Point and let's take a look at Broadlands. Okay, when you go into those websites, they generally will have some sort of a mission statement or these are our values and our ethics. Okay, um, so for many different places, you will see, um, or let's do hospitals, just like I said, uh, they'll have some of the same things in common. We're looking for people that um, respect the patient or the customer that's coming in, that have integrity for their, their, their behavior and their performance every day at work, compassion for those people coming into the business. Okay, and there'll be several that are common. However, where we can see a split is um, if it's a religious based hospital, they may say on there that you must have reverence to a higher power. Okay, now they're not just specifying that you have to believe one way or another, but they're, what they're saying is that you have to have respect and reverence. Maybe you don't believe like someone else does that comes into that building, but you're still going to show them that opportunity. And I know this is probably a worst case scenario to be thinking about, but if someone said, listen, I'm feeling very weak and very vulnerable right now in the hospital. Can you please call a chaplain or someone over so that I can talk with them? And you're like, what do you mean? Why would you do that? There's no such thing as God. Okay. Well, listen, that's not your role in that position. What your role is to respect the beliefs of the people coming in there. So that's why those values are really good. If you uh, good to be going out there and memorizing for an employer and realizing which ones you can achieve and which ones you may not be able to. Okay. Very, very important for us to be able to do that. So you're going to go out there and look at their values, bring those up during the interview. And you probably should have those on your resume already too. The job duties. Again, I said, make sure that you can close your eyes and think about what would it look like to do this job every day. Okay. Um, so what I would ask you to do here is every job uh, description or every job duty that you see on that description, think of the best two SAR formats. And SAR format is situation, action, and result. 
every answer that I give back to that employer should follow that format. Now, some of you, if you've ever been to any other types of uh, presentation, they used to use a, another one. It was very, very popular. It was called STAR. It essentially is the same thing, situation, task, action, and result. SAR is just a little bit easier. It's a little bit more concise. Situation, action, and result. Okay, so what was the situation that we're talking about here? What was the action that I took and what was the result of the effort that I put into that? Okay, so again, go through each of those job duties and say, I need the best two story problems or story uh, stories that I can, I can put out there for that. Okay, um, another thing is you can print uh, or write down anything that you believe will help you with an interview. All right. So it's a good thing to ask for permission when you walk in. Now, most employers would say, no, we don't care that you write things down. That is not a problem to us, but I'm in your house now, okay? When I go in for an interview, I'm there with the employer. I want to just make sure that they understand that I'm courteous and respectful. And so I am going to start that out with, well, while we're in the interview today, do you mind if I take notes if it's necessary? Okay. And then we aren't going to like bury our face down and keep our face in those notes the whole time. We want to make sure that we're keeping that, that contact, uh, make sure that there is a feeling that we are two people interacting uh, in a room together. All right. And um, also remember, check your network. Who do I know that I would be able to uh, tap into? So if you need a letter of recommendation of someone that you might have worked with before from a supervisor or a manager, and I see that they work in this business or have worked in that business, they could be a very, very valuable asset to me. OK, so we're going to go out there and look into that network. LinkedIn is a great place to go do that. Facebook works as well. Um, who do I know that will help me through this process? Okay. Now, just to let you guys all know, interviewing situations and settings will change depending on what the job is. Okay. Do you work alone? Are you working with a group of people and you have to really interact with them, uh, talking to lots of different people, um, cooperating with a project? Uh, there's a lot that you can possibly have to do, and that may change what you see in here for your interview process. Okay. Do you answer to more than one manager? Okay, if you answer to more than one manager, they may have more than one manager there for, uh, for interviewing you. Do you get along with everybody? Okay, it doesn't work so well if you have one person to get along with in that business and you can't stand or get along with anybody else. So they're really going to bring other people in. If you have to do that, uh, they may bring other people in and make sure that there's going to be a good fit for all parties involved. Okay. Um, so let's talk about the one on one situation. This is probably the most common interview style and setting that we would see. Okay, I think that no one, I would probably say no one feels comfortable in an interview. Okay, um, even myself, I, I train these workshops. I've done lots and lots and lots of them. Whenever I walk in and I feel that I may be scrutinized or judged, that's a very natural reaction uh, to feel nervous. Okay, you got to get control of that. Right. Um, but that one on one is probably the most common we will see and where we would feel most relaxed. OK, um, so that will just be me sitting down with one person. They ask me a question. I provide them with an answer. If I have a question, I ask them and then they provide me with an answer. OK, so very easy uh, or I should say it's less complex and we're just going back and forth with each other. OK, um, group interviews, um, this one. Uh, this can be where you may be meeting um, with several different interviewers at the same time, or uh, there was a company that we had did a little work with, and what they did was they had you doing one-on-ones, but there was a sequence involved with that. So I would go meet with Elizabeth first, and um, I would meet with Elizabeth first, and then if she felt like I did a good job, if she felt like there was a really good connection and thought that they wanted to move me on to the next part, she would say, Quickly, Corey, just grab your things together. Come along with me. I want to introduce you to Tressa, okay? And then I would sit down and I would be talking to Tressa. And Tressa, at that point, would decide whether or not we stop here or if she feels comfortable enough and confident enough in how that interview went, she might move me on to another person. Say, Corey, get your things together. I'd like to meet you one. Uh, I'd like you to meet one of my coworkers. Okay, so um, that is what we could see as one of those group settings, and this can take a little bit longer to do, and the fact that you have to keep up that energy that you see from one person to the next, 
Okay. Now, the other way we would see a group is when you walk into a room and there's a group of people sitting there in front of you. I do have to tell you that I have been in several of those before and they are not comfortable. Okay. Um, because there's a lot of people and you feel judged by all of those people that are sitting there in front of you. Okay. Now, here's the way that we need to be prepared. Do you have enough material for all those people? Right. I would say that you need to take, I would err on the side of caution and take too much to an interview. Now, please don't bring your little red wagon uh, in with you and dragging everything along with you. We don't need that much stuff. You're going to just bring extra resumes, extra cover letters, anything there that you feel um, that you would like to have a little extra of just in case. I meet with the Elizabeth and they meet with Tressa and then move on to somebody else or if everyone is just sitting right in front of me. Generally, I would say in addition to the copies that I keep for myself because I always want to have my things sitting here in front of me. If I uh, lose my train of thought, I can quickly look down. I can see what I have and then move in a very uh, a nice flow. Okay, um, so I always have my copies of what I need for myself and then I want to try to make sure that I, I always like to say five extra copies of things. I may not use all of those and chances are that you won't, but it's still nice to be able to hand those extra out. You don't want anyone sitting there empty handed. Okay, and that's another reason why it's a really good idea to ask what you may be in uh, in store for with this interview. I want to make sure that I have enough material. Can you tell me who I would be meeting when I come into this interview. Okay. So um, the other thing is eye contact during that process. That's a eye share, or that's a time share on your eye contact, right? I'm having to make sure I'm looking at Tressa and then taking a little time with Elizabeth and then anybody else I'm gonna be interviewing there in that room with, I wanna make sure that I'm smiling at everybody. I'm making good eye contact. The nods go a long way, okay? Um, so make sure that you are, um, spending that time with each person. So as I go through my answer, I'm looking a little bit at each person, okay? And trying to gauge what's going on there. Um, everybody has a name, use it. Now, if you're anything like me, I have a terrible habit with names. It's, it's a thing that I'm challenged with. Um, so there are several things that we can do. That's good. Why, that's a, one reason why it's good to have that piece of paper in there with you or something to take notes on or that I already know who I'm going to be meeting with. And I just quickly jot those names down as they tell them and as we introduce ourselves. Okay. Um, so as you talk to people, it makes a great connection with people when you would say, that's a great question, Elizabeth. Thank you for asking. So here's how I would respond to that. Okay, uh, once I say Elizabeth's name or I say anybody else's dress or anybody, I've got their attention. I spoke to them by their name. Okay, um, so that's why I feel that it's a really good thing to try to memorize those names. Okay, um, have them on that piece of paper until you do remember them. All right, um, now here's a little situation and, and you guys can put your comments over here. Um, I'll answer the question regardless, but I would like to know how you feel what the difference in these two topics would be. Um, the two things I'm gonna to mention to you right now are bragging, okay, um, and shameless self-promotion. So when we go into an interview, we really want to be able to talk really well about ourselves, but sometimes people have a hard time doing that because they feel like they're bragging. I hear that all the time. We're bragging. I don't like to brag. We're trained not to brag. Bragging is not a nice quality out of people. Okay. So what's the difference between bragging and what we would consider shameless self-promotion? I'll give you a moment to think about that. Sorry, you can tell I still have a cold. I need my little tea. What do you think the difference is between bragging and shameless self-promotion? So we all know who likes people that brag? Not very many, right? You can take it for a little bit, but um, after a while it's like, oh, just shut up, would you, right? Um, people that brag. Well, the thing about bragging is generally it's pretty baseless. Someone is just saying something because they're trying to hype themselves up. And often we will see that they don't have anything to back up what they're talking about, okay? Now let's talk about shameless self-promotion. That shameless self-promoter is the one that comes in there with something to back up what they're talking about, right? Um, so you can say, well, I, I consider myself one of the best sales uh, salespersons on the team, right? And the employer's like, oh, you know how many times we've heard that out of people, okay? Um, and you can say, well, and actually to prove my point, 
here's a letter of recommendation from a previous employer that I had that said not only was I able to meet the sales goals that they set for us, I was also the top salesperson on my team. And in fact, I was able to earn my that last business over $125,000 in that year over the sales quota that they put in there for us. And I did that by doing this, this, and this, as they also say on my letter of recommendation. So that's turned in an area that I'm not bragging. I brought proof to the table. So do not feel bad about going into an interview and talking highly about yourself. Just make sure that whatever it is that you're talking about, that that can be scrutinized and that you're gonna have something there that you can use as proof to back up exactly what it is that you told that employer, okay? Um, so. Let's talk about what an interview is really for. They want to know you a little bit better, right? Okay. Um, so we definitely want to make sure that we have all of our stuff prepared and we're answering these questions in a way that they know that we can meet the requirements of the job. Okay. Um, I apologize, I skipped a little step here. When you're meeting with a whole group of people as well, where the other people that would be trying for that job are in the room with you, that's an, another one of those groups that I'm sorry, I forgot to say something about them. Um, that is a, that's gotta be, I would probably say one of the most difficult interviews I could be put into. Now, I luckily have never been into one of those, um, but there, that would be very difficult in my own opinion, because that really steps up the, the difficulty level and the fact that the other people in the room are the ones trying for that job as well. And that's just naturally, you're there with the competition, okay? Um, so it's gotta be really difficult. So a couple of things to think about with that one. Um, that's why, again, I like to say two of your best star answers to any of those questions they ask. What happens if someone else in that room answers that question like I was wanting to? Well, then I sound like that person goes, oh, I wanna back up what Susie said. That's how I am too. And they're like, okay, well, that was pretty anticlimactic. Right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make sure that we have the two best responses. So if someone else asks, answers in a way that sounds very much like how I would answer that, I have another question that I can go back on that's totally different uh, and it will um, allow me to sound unique in the group and still meet the needs of what that employer is really trying to uh, ascertain in that question. Okay, um, now here's another thing to think about with those groups where everyone is in there. Sometimes they do that because they wanna make sure that people really work well with each other, okay? How are you when you're out here? Are you gonna be a person that comes in and steps on someone else's toes and throw someone else under the bus? Because guess what? That's not in our mission statement. So if you look over and said, well, Susie answered like this, but let me tell you how I'm better than what Susie is. Okay, so uh, we want to make sure that we're not doing that kind of stuff. All right, we want that could be a very much a team effort that they're looking for, and they don't want someone uh, trying to step all over someone else to get what they want. All right. Um, and in other cases, it may be that when you're going out there and doing sales, I would probably say maybe an area that was very competitive in my own mind. Uh, years ago when I worked in healthcare, uh, people going out there and uh, getting doctors to use a specific type of a prescription drug. There are drug reps all over the place that are trying to get the doctors to use what they have to offer over something else. So in those cases, how can you outmatch who else is in that room with you? Okay, um, so you got to think about who that employer is, what they would be looking for, and then use your best judgment that you would be answering that question appropriately, behaving in a way that's not going to turn them off to you as an employee. Okay, so now... I'm going to break things down with you because there's a lot of um, fear when you go into an interview and the idea of how do I know what an employer is really looking for. So let me break this down into a little bit easier thing to understand. There are generally five things an employer is really looking to ascertain with any question that they would ask you during the interview. The biggest one, are you interested in this position? Okay, so when they ask you questions, the way you answer those questions with a smile, with really good eye contact, that's gonna give them an idea if you really are interested or not in that position, okay? So that's one thing to think about. Uh, any question that you would pull out for an interview, that could be one of the things that they're trying to ascertain. Another one could be, do you possess the skills or experience for this job? 
okay? So that's another thing. Uh, there are questions they would ask when it would be like, can you tell me how your skills and experience would make you a successful candidate? They're trying to figure out if you have what they, what they need uh, for you to be successful in that position. So that's another question that they will be trying to get to the bottom of. Will they like you? Okay. Uh, if you're throwing people under the bus, you're talking bad about a previous employer, or your coworkers, uh, that may give them the idea that we, look, if you were doing that for who were, you worked with before, we are just the next little uh, target in line for you. Okay. So that's a question. Will they like you? And here's another one. Can they afford you? Okay. So if you are a person with a bachelor's degree, and, or excuse me, if you're a person with a master's degree and you're going in to apply for a job that is a bachelor's degree, well, can they afford you, all right? If you throw that education out there, they're like, well, we really need someone that's, uh, our best candidate has a bachelor's degree. The next one that we would look for will take someone that has an associate's, okay? And you're in there talking about all these things that you've done that utilize that master's degree. Um, and people get those degrees because they can do more, they can get paid more. Um, there are reasons that people go out and they, they increase their, their education. So be careful. They may be looking at, can they afford you? Uh, if the last job that I worked at paid me $120,000 and the one I'm applying for now pays me 70, an employer may say, hmm, are you going to jump ship and run the next time you have something that pays you closer to the 120 instead of the 70? OK, uh, and if you have all those skills and experience that are well beyond what they're looking for, education's well beyond what they're looking for, they could think that they might not be able to afford you and you move on to somebody else. Now, will you stay is another one. Um, looking at your job, to, uh, at your resume is a good idea for them to figure out in the first place, will you stay? Are you a job hopper? OK, um, tell me why you left your last job. I didn't like the manager. Okay, well, guess what? We have managers here too. And guess what? They tell you things that you don't want to hear either. Every manager has to do that uncomfortable style of work. And we will just be the next one in line that you leave because you can't take constructive criticism with uh, ease. Okay, um, doesn't mean you have to like what they say, but how do you react to the information that they're giving you? So will you stay? Those are the five things that we generally see an employer is trying to get at with any question that they would ask you. Now, what I would set up as a challenge for yourself is go out there and Google the top 10, top 25, top 50 interview questions that you would see during any interview, and then go through and take a look. And you can see that sometimes we can even answer to more than one of these for each one of those job titles that you would see or those job descriptions that you would see, okay? So um, that's a really good thing to do. And then go out there and look at that job description and try to figure out by what they're saying that you have to do, how am I going to rephrase my answers so they meet what you are looking for for that ideal candidate, okay? Now, before you go into that interview, a couple of things that we wanted you to get printed and in order, your cover letter and your resume, okay? Because you do wanna have those. And again, multiple copies, I'd say probably besides your own copy, take five in if you need to. If, and unless you know exactly that you're only gonna meet with one person, I would maybe only take in two, okay? Uh, what happens if you spill something on one of them that you have? Well, then you have another one that you can back up on, right? So get those together. If you have a portfolio that can not only uh, that can show an employer what you're uh, able to do. So I like to think about someone who would do house cleaning, uh, someone to do construction, remodeling. What did this project look like before and what did it look like after we got done with it? Okay. If you are a photographer, you better get some of your shots together. Okay. Uh, get some things in the show, what you had to work with and what you were able to make out of that. Okay, so any example of your work and try to think outside the box. Uh, here's something you could think about with an example of your work. Those uh, annual uh, reviews that you have to do with your manager or your boss, right? Um, those say things on there that you can bring in as uh, a show of what you're able to do. Just please make sure you know what's on there. And if it says on there that, you know, um, Corey showed up to work like he was supposed to every day, but then later on it says he, but he didn't play so well with others. Um, I don't want them to see the negative stuff. So please be, be aware of what you have on there. Uh, don't be that person that goes in there with something that you want to show them that's great and right below is something that tears you down just as much. All right. Um, references. Okay, we don't generally put these on a resume is what we like to say. However, 
Um, they are really good to have. I will just have an extra paper that has my references on there. Okay. Um, as well, the references that you have are the people that I want you to get letters of recommendation from, if at all possible. Okay. Here's the reason why I say that. References are meant for an employer to call up afterwards and ask questions about you, right? Well, did he work for you? Um, did he work from this time to this time? Like you said, you know, is everything true, right? Why I like having a letter of recommendation is because I can be proactive and take a little work off of the plate of the person that's doing the interviews, right? Um, they may not have to call that employer out and say, well, did Corey show up to work on time like he was supposed to? Because right there on my letter of recommendation, it says exactly what I have told them to put on there or what they put on there. Know what's on your information. And why I say what I told them to put on there is because I've done that with employers before. I know that the next employer that I'm going to be airing with needs me to have these five or six different things addressed. Well, then I can say, listen, for one, you don't want someone to have to write a five page uh, letter of recommendation to cover all that stuff. So basically I'll kind of divvy that up and say to one uh, reference, can you in that letter of recommendation say, uh, address these two things. Now I'm not asking you to lie. If I didn't show up to work like I was supposed to, then I don't want you saying something that's not true because that then is tarnishing your character as well as mine. And I don't want to do that to anybody. Right. Um, so divvy that up. So there's a little bit on each one and know what's on each letter of recommendation. So during the interview, you can pull that out and you can say, as you can see by the copy you have and the pa packet that I gave you, here is what they have said about me that addresses what you are needing me to do. They back me up on that. Okay. So again, my references and my letters of recommendation, I like to be from the same person. Now, when that employer calls, they don't have to ask all those questions to that previous employer, my, let, my reference. What they can just say is, did you write this for Corey? Oh, you did? You know what, then great. Thank you very much for your time, okay? They have everything they need and you were proactive and look how easy you made their job. If you don't think that someone in HR notices that kind of stuff, you have never worked in HR before, okay? Uh, any other supporting material that you would feel that would be beneficial to your cause with that employer, okay? Um, so some things to be thinking about is, uh, did a customer send me a thank you card? That is a great thing to be taking in if you can. Um, one person that went through our workshops had a little, little um, a sandwich baggie that had these stars, okay? Uh, and what it was was the employer had a little box of stars there and some pans and things that uh, a coworker or a customer that came through that business would be able to pick up a star and write a little message to the person that made their day, okay? And that person kept those stars, okay? And they bring in a whole bunch of them. They just brought a few that really uh, uh, displayed them in the best light, right? And they brought those out as an example or proof. Um, so if you have um, a certificate from an employer, right, that says, you know, um, so-and-so that worked in the warehouse had two years of uh, no accidents, no reportable injuries, and good luck, a good job for, uh, or congratulations for a great job, right? Although sometimes like, oh, great, thanks, you gave me a, a, a certificate. I, that's going to be lovely. But those are valuable, folks. Uh, keep those put away someplace so that you can bring them out during the interview and show them off because that's the kind of stuff they want to see you getting in their business as well. Okay. Um, so make sure that you know the route to the interview before you go. Um, there may be a train that passes. How awful for you to be late because there's a train that's passing. Okay, uh, if you, I, what, so what I would suggest is know where you're supposed to go, know when you're supposed to be there and do a dry run or two before you actually have it and do it during the time frame that you have set up for your interview so that you really know what traffic is going to look like or what you may encounter in that uh, route to that uh, employer. Okay, um, let's see, what else could we do here? Um, Go out and network with your friends, any people that you know that have worked with that employer before and ask them questions. Oh my gosh, Susie, I'm so excited to see, uh, I'm so excited to hear from you. I saw you on my LinkedIn. I thought I would make a connection. Um, how's everything going, right? It's Pleasure to see you. And you know, real quick here, I've got a little business to take care of well as well. Um, I see that you work for ABC Company, right? Well, what did that interview look like? Can you give me a little bit of insight on what, what that was like? 
Um, who did you talk to or what were some of the questions that they asked? Um, also, you can ask that person, what did you know before you went into that job that made that job even easier for you to be successful at? And if there were any things that you could have prepared for before going in, what do you wish you would have known? Okay, uh, what kind of training or things did you take that made that job easier? Okay, now here's the one that is a little more difficult for people. Practice, practice, practice. You have to practice before you go into an interview. And I don't care if you're just sitting in the bathroom looking in the mirror. You're looking to make sure you've got that eye contact going on, um, those types of things, and you're rehearsing those questions. If you have pets and you love them and they sit there and stare at you all day, we'll just turn around one day and start practicing the interview with them. If they respond, I think you have a little bit more trouble going on than what we really uh, would like to address in this forum. Um, but they're great. You're, again, practicing that, making sure that you are looking at them. If you have friends and family, as I said last week, they're all too eager to tell you what you do wrong in any given situation. And so tapping them because they're going to give you that hard response that you're looking for so that you can prepare uh, much better for that interview. Now let's talk about during the interview. Okay. We will be um, addressing these questions in the SAR format. Again, situation, action, and result, okay? Uh, we are going to be polite, we are going to be professional, and we are going to feel engaging to the people that are in the room with us, okay? That's by making eye contact, smiling and nodding, okay? Um, knowing your materials, not being afraid to use them. If they ask you a question and you have something in your portfolio that you can pull out that will back up what you are saying that is shameless self-promotion and you want to make sure that you are doing that, okay? Uh, make sure that when you walk into that room that you, I, I know that we're in the COVID uh, stuff here, uh, but we will at some point in time probably get back to that area of the handshakes, okay? Or the fist bumps or whatever it is that they would like to do. Right now, I would probably just say, I would shake your hand. I would love to shake your hand, but of course, with what we're going through, um, you know, I would say it's a pleasure to meet you. Um, sometimes we would have, in some of the groups I've worked with, we have people of a diverse background that do not shake their hands for whatever reason that that would be. Um, and during one group, uh, we had several folks from the same country and they said, we don't shake hands. Okay, and again, we didn't get into the, res uh, the reason why uh, they didn't shake hands, but what we said to them was, well, then what do you do to make that connection with somebody? And they said, we bow out of respect. Then bow out of respect, okay? Um, and be ready to talk about that. Listen, I would shake your hand, but we're in the middle of the pandemic. I don't wanna do anything that would be um, inappropriate at this time. Um, or uh, where I am from, we don't shake hands, but we bow out of even greater respect for you. So I bow out of respect to you, okay? And believe it or not, those folks that we had that talked to us about that, they were some of the first people to get the jobs out of that program that we worked with, okay? Um, and the other thing is when you shake someone's hand, for those that do, um, that's, a, that's a connection, you know? Uh, why do we shake hands? I mean, if we look back at history, there are some very um, disturbing reasons at first why we didn't shake hands or why we did shake hands. So for example, if uh, there are two kings uh, from uh, warring nations that are meeting with each other, they would come and that they would shake hands. It wasn't just this kind of a shake hand. It was both hands in a handshake. I put one hand in yours. I put my hand on the outside of it and they put their hand out on this side, right? And what are we doing there? We're checking for weapons, folks. Okay, we are making sure that you didn't have something there that was going to, uh, they were able to pull out and stab me between the ribs. Okay, um, so that's where that handshaking originally started. But something has happened to us as human beings from that, because that's a connection between two people. And in fact, there was a university that did a study on that. I think it was Minnesota, but I don't, don't recall right off the top of my head. Um, that they would watch, they would put people into, what is that, a CAT scan and see the brain activity. And they would show people videos of people shaking hands, bowing out of respect, lots of different things, hugs, okay? And believe it or not, the sensory neurons in our brains explode when we make contact with people, 
right? Our body releases chemicals that make us feel good when we have that connection with people. And so when we get back into the air of being able to do that, I would not miss out on an opportunity to create that kind of a reaction with people, okay? So we're gonna make sure that we're shaking hands and doing all that kind of stuff when we get back to that time. Um, so some questions that we would see here um, it would be, tell me about yourself. They don't wanna know that you like to go skiing. They don't wanna know that you like dogs or pets unless you're applying for the ARL, but it needs to be something related to the job that you're applying for. About 45 seconds to two minutes, look at the job description and know those answers. Here's another one. Uh, so two ways you can ruin that interview right in the beginning. The question about, tell me about yourself. And then here's one that they sneak in that's awful, right? Um, what do you know about us? If you aren't ready to answer that question, I've heard people say, they asked me two questions during the interview. Tell me about myself. And then they ask what I knew about them. And then they said, you know, thank you so much for coming in. It was a great, a great opportunity to meet you, but good luck with your future endeavors. Okay. And how awful you would feel at getting two questions out during the interview and it stops. So know what to talk about for the employer as well. Okay. The job description and who they are as an entity. Um, you tell me about a time when will be another question. And that means I need to hear a story, an actual example. Make sure you're addressing that actual example, okay? Don't go, well, if it, if it was me in a situation, I might do this. Well, that's not an example. That's a what if. That doesn't even mean that I've ever done that before, okay? So we're gonna make sure that we answer that appropriately. What does excellent customer service mean to you? Again, well, this is what it means to me. And here, let me tell you an example of uh, when I had to utilize that extra uh, excellent customer service. What do you consider a strength and what do you consider a weakness? This is a very difficult area for, employee, uh, for a person interviewing because we don't like to talk bad about our weaknesses. We don't like to talk about those, right? Um, they show weakness. And so people don't know how to address that. Well, here's how you're going to do that. I don't just say, well, my weakness is, is I have trouble with computers and I just get frustrated and angry and I broke three mice throwing them against the wall that way, okay? Um, that's not what we're gonna do. We're gonna say, well, you know, actually computers, okay? Computer and computer programs, I, uh, for in my life, I never used a computer really. I was always in jobs that didn't require that, but I'm seeing that more and more of them are used every day. Now, as frustrating as that can be to me sometimes, I went taking some computer classes. Um, I've actually found that I enjoy using a computer, okay, and here are some of the things that I've been able to achieve on a computer that I was never able to achieve before, and so with that in mind, look how much I'm going to be able to know in the future, okay, so we don't leave it as a weakness, we're going to throw something there that will bring it back over to the area of a strength, okay, and the strengths are usually quite easy to talk about. Okay, um, so tell me about what a previous manager or boss would have said about you. Well, again, have that letter of recommendation. I don't have to think about what they would say. Let me tell you what they would say, okay? Um, so make sure that you have that stuff there. Or if you ever had trouble with the boss, well, how did I get through that effectively in a good positive way? And just because we didn't agree at the end of it doesn't mean that we didn't finish that uh, in a positive aspect. We both went both ways, felt much more comfortable about the situation regardless of our differences, okay? And then there's the crazy question that you might be asked. Okay, and what do I mean by that? One interview that I did, um, they asked me what that fuzz was on the outside of a tennis ball. What do you call that fuzz on the outside of a tennis ball? I, I don't play tennis, um, but what I did tell them, I call that a mess. I have a dog, he tears it up and leaves it all over the house. Okay, so guess what we don't have in the house anymore? Tennis balls, okay? Um, they like that answer. Okay, because it was on the fly, I answered it. I didn't sit there and be like, well, what kind of a stupid question is that? Um, be ready for those because sometimes employers just like to see how you respond to something that you will not know the answer to. Okay, and other thing about questions is ones that you should have. You should never walk away from an interview without having a, at least one question for the employer and it's not how much am I gonna get paid in this job? Okay, um, you could say things like, um, can you tell me what you like best about working with this company? Okay, uh, what we don't want to say is what do you, uh, what do you, what does the ideal candidate look like to you? And they're in their own mind going, hello, I wrote the job description. What do you think the ideal candidate looks like? 
Okay. Um, so, and the other one that I always like to say is, uh, how do I get your job? Is not going to be something that you're going to be asking during that interview. So please be careful about those things. But, you know, if you've got legitimate questions, ask those. Look for stuff that may be going on the news. I saw your company received a million dollar grant for improvements to help out the community. Where do you think you see that uh, happening or how do you see that happening? Reason why you should have uh, questions for them is it does show interest for you in that job. Um, it shows knowledge of the industry and the job, and it will give you the idea or the culture and make you decide whether or not you would like to work for them. Now, after the interview, you're going to want to follow up. Um, if you can, do what a customer of mine said some time ago. They took little um, thank you cards right there. They kept them in the car. And then once they were done with that interview, they quickly ran out while everything was fresh in their mind and they wrote up a nice little thank you card. First of all, we don't see that kind of stuff much anymore. So I do believe that it sets you out above from everybody else. Um, thank them for their time because you, they could have interviewed somebody else. Um, ask for a time frame, if possible, on when you might hear back from them. And if they do give you one, please stick to it. If they say, we will look to contact you in about two weeks. Don't call two days later and say, have you made up your mind yet? Okay. Um, because they're going to look and say, well, you specifically asked what that was going to look like. And then you ignored what I told you. Not sure this is going to work out. And then don't don't harass or stalk them, okay? And I only say that because I had heard that happening before. Um, one time I had a guy that called me probably 13 times before I was even scheduled to start my shift. And he said, this company never called me back and they said they were going to yesterday and blah, 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 right? So I said, well, calm down, let me call the employer. I called the employer and said, yeah, I'm calling on, uh, on behalf of such and such person. They said, oh, him, uh, tell him a little something for us, would you? It's calling us 13 times over and over again is not what we want in our business, okay? We're done. We'll call him when we get a chance, okay? So make sure that you stay reasonable about that. Uh, with your negotiations, if they call you back and say that they want to hire you and that they're interested in you, there are a few things I want you to think about. One is act excited, okay? You don't have to sound like you won the lottery, but you need to act excited about it. OK, um, make sure that you get that offer in writing. If something changes, like you tell them later, well, listen, thank you for the opportunity. Now I have a disability and I need to talk about a reasonable accommodation. If they take that off of the table now and say that we don't need you anymore, something happened to when you offer me the job to now when I'm telling you that we need to make an accommodation and I need to know what happened. OK, um, that's why you really should always get those offers in writing. Know your wage range where you what you won't go under and what you know is just really above what you would be applying for um so don't be ridiculous just because you had to live on a hundred thousand dollars before doesn't mean this employer is responsible for giving you a hundred thousand dollars now what is the prevailing wage that we would see for that style of a job if you don't know get to linkedin and talk to people that have done that job go to glassdoor and see what the responses are on there or go on to ONET online and take a look at the labor information for the state of Iowa or whatever state it is that you would be going into. Um, so you would not always want to answer that question right away either. Uh, often we say, turf it back to the employer. Well, what would someone with my skill and experience um, get paid in this kind of a position? And they may say, well, we want you to answer that for. Well, now all that research that you did is going to come to the table. OK, and if they're just going to pay you pennies on the dollar for that type of a job, know that there are other employers that will pay you reasonably and fairly. So don't throw your stuff away. Move on to someone that will respect you by paying you an appropriate wage. Um, always keep a positive attitude. Again, no may come out as they're offering positions to people. They may say, no, I'm sorry. Um, we have went another way a route with this. Well, no doesn't mean no. No means not right now. OK, um, so. That is quite a bit of information to give you guys all in one time there, um, but preparation is key here. Uh, what kinds of questions do you guys have for me today? Uh, Corey, there is a question. How do you recover after a flub question? Everybody flubs, first of all, remember that. Um, during an interview, they're expecting people to make a mistake. Okay. Sometimes if it's too late during the interview, that's why I like that thank you letter. Um, you could say, well, I answered this one question. Listen, I answered this one question. I didn't feel I really did myself enough justice. So here's how I would respond to that. Maybe a little bit better. Um, 
or if you can remember before the interview is over, just you know, just try to 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 fix it. Just remember that everybody makes mistakes and they're used to that. You're nervous. Um, don't think it's just like a cut and dry. You're out. Okay, so don't be too hard on yourself. And another question is, um, how do you negotiate the pay? Okay, so um, we need to know what that prevailing wage is for that style of a job, okay? You can't argue or you can't negotiate if you don't know what the terms are, right? So if I'm going out there and um, so, for example, um, for a, a restaurant position, going in and saying that I need $20 an hour for a cashier job, um, so there's some places you can go and they will pay you $20 an hour for that. That's the prevailing wage in that area. Um, in other places like Iowa, $20 is probably just not going to be a value that we would see for that style of a job. So check out LinkedIn. They have wage information on there. Um, check out, uh, and also talk to people that have done that job before. Again, I can go in and put ABC company, and then I can also go through and see who those um, uh, um, members of LinkedIn are that have uh, done that job before and ask them. Just be careful. Sometimes people don't like giving all that information out. They feel a little bit weird about talking about wages to another person. Uh, so we do have the ONET online website that gives you great data on what we see as that prevailing wage in any area and try to take into consideration. So for example, we said, what if an employer says they want someone with a bachelor's, but they'll take someone with an associate's? Well, I'm going to, and I don't have much experience. They want five, but I only have two. Um, in those cases, we see ourselves moving down. I didn't think about bringing ONET online up today, but I will tell you, they have a great little graph on there. It'll say, here's the low end, here's the mid range, here's the high scale. OK, it'll show statewide and it'll show nationwide. And you can really assume that someone that's going in with little experience, not that much education, is probably going to go in there towards the area that's a little lower toward the bottom of that scale. Someone that's been doing that job for a little while has a pretty close, if not to the education that would make you a competitive uh, candidate. Well, then we see ourselves in the mid range. If I have all the education, I have all the skills and experience, and plus I bring other things to the table, well, I might see myself moving a little bit higher up that scale. Okay. What's the worst they're going to tell you? No. I mean, no, we're not going to pay that. And then you need to decide whether or not that's going to be fair. I think those are the only questions that I have. That was uh, a lot of information, a lot of good information, um, information that, you know, again, it's not taught in the classrooms and then you go out into the real world and here it is. So um, now I have one thing I'm going to show here on the screen, if you don't mind. Um, and this, uh, oh, host disabled screen sharing. Well, Tressa has a little document that I sent out which is a kind of like a rubric um, that you would see for any tests that you would, or any um, papers you would write for your teachers, that sort of stuff. Employers use that same style of grading or scoring. Um, there it is, thank you very much. Um, so as you can see right there, um, this is what we use uh, in our environment where we're doing mock interviews, but this has been used for years. The introduction, you know, are you developing a good one? Um, or is it something that seems like it's in the works? Did you do okay at it or did you seem proficient in the introduction? The handshake, again, you know, we're in the COVID whole thing here, so that may not be uh, something to think about, but uh, we probably will get back to that. That's kind of a hard thing to lose in all honesty. The eye contact, the body language, am I, am I, um, am I slouched down in the chair um, or am I laid back too far like I'm too relaxed? Um, what's my enthusiasm? Do I sound like Droopy the dog? And I'm sure I'm probably aging myself there saying that. But someone that just doesn't, or Eeyore. I mean, I don't know who we have for Winnie the Pooh fans in the room, but, um, you know, do you sound like Eeyore? Oh, I'm so excited about this opportunity. And they're like, well, you said you were, but, you know, doesn't seem like it. So, 
Um, and if we move down that page just a little bit as well, um, the verbal piece of it, um, did you have good effective answers? Did it sound like you weren't prepared? Did it sound like you did okay? Or man, they just blew it out of the park. They addressed it in a good SAR format. Did they emphasize their qualifications? You know, Did they have a good knowledge of the job? Don't forget, they're gonna ask you what you know about the job or what you know about their company. Did you answer those in that SAR format, that situation, action, and result, and develop questions of the questions that you ask the employer, okay? So those are things that they want you uh, to be asking. And so um, for those of you who um, are going into interviews, this is a great little thing. When you have someone that's kind of helping you, I would pull this out and let them fill that out and tell you what you did well. Um, there's also some websites you can go to. I apologize, I didn't know any because we used to have one that went through Indian Hills. Um, it was an avatar that would ask us questions. And then you got to go back and record your, or it recorded you and you got to go back and, and watch that. How did I sound? Um, did I sound confident? And they've got little scores that you can put there, like how many times did I say, um, oh, or whatever. So check those out. I'm sure there are other ones out online, um, record, interview recorders, that type of a thing, or just do it on your own webcam and listen, you know? All right. Um... That's, again, that's a lot of great information. Um, and I'm sure, you know, uh, people who are uh, watching this later can, you know, take down notes. Um, we do have your information. Um, so if anyone wanted to reach out, uh, obviously LinkedIn is something that you hit uh, pretty hard. Um, and I definitely think that there is something in there that, that you know, um, that we need to kind of explore um, and not looking at, at it like a social media feed type of thing, um, yeah. like a Facebook and stuff. Like that. Yeah. So uh, Just, I do appreciate your time, Corey, yeah. with this. This, this, no was, this was great. Uh, please don't forget that we have uh, offices all over the state. Okay. So check out what local I will works office would be nearest to you. Uh, we now offer those in-person services again into our office. Um, so if you have trouble with the resume, you have trouble with the interview, uh, you are always welcome and we love to get people in that need that assistance. So don't forget just to check out one of your workforce centers. If you need something, stop in and see us and we will, we will get you taken care of. Okay. Thanks everybody. All right. You guys heard it there first. Uh, 